Okay. okay. Oh, oh, bugger. Cut. Hello, and welcome to Jason's Macintosh Museum. I'm Jason, your host, and today I'd like to present the second part of the series entitled Problems You Encounter with Old Apple Macintosh Computers. And specifically, this week we're going to talk about batteries. Now if you've watched part one of the video series Problems You Encounter with Old Apple Macintosh Computers, you'll know that I was talking there about the bad electrolytic capacitors on the logic board and how those capacitors have a tendency to fail and to leak. And when they leak, they can cause damage to the logic board. But if you looked, if you remember the end of that video, I hinted that there is in fact a, a, more, a far more insidious problem that affects old Macintosh computers. And in particular, this problem, if not dealt with, can completely destroy the logic board. And that is batteries. Now, just like every other computer made really since the, the mid-1980s, the um, Macintosh, well, in fact, every model of Macintosh ever since the very first one, has had a battery somewhere within the system, primarily to serve two functions. One, to keep the real-time clock powered up so the computer doesn't lose its date and time when you turn the power off. And two, to maintain system settings known as parameter memory or PRAM. And for those of you who work with PCs, it's the equivalent of the BIOS settings um, on a PC. But on an Apple Macintosh, the parameter RAM handles such settings as the mouse tracking speed, the current time zone, um, I think the current printer that you've got um, selected, and a few other system settings which um, are not stored within the actual file system of the Mac OS. So obviously there is a need to have a battery in the system. Unfortunately, what happens to batteries over time is that they can, like capacitors, they can leak. And unfortunately, because of the amount of electrolyte stored in the battery as opposed to a capacitor, when a battery leaks into, the, into a system, it can do far, far more damage than a capacitor could. And as I'll show you later on, I've seen batteries that have leaked and have totally destroyed the logic board. And this is part of the problem. With the exception of the very first Macintosh models up to the Macintosh 512KE, Apple placed the battery directly, more or less directly, on the logic board. So if the battery leaked, it leaks straight into the logic board, corrodes the traces, and you more or less have a logic board that is, that is totally, well, that is junk. There's really, it's very hard to, to fix. So if you have an old Apple Macintosh, I highly recommend that you, well, I strongly recommend that you take the CMOS or the PRAM battery out of them. Because really for normal usage, I don't really think it makes a difference in that, okay, you may find that the, the date and time are wrong when you power the system on, but personally, I don't think that's a big deal. And it's certainly preferable to leaving the battery in there and, and running the risk of it corroding, leaking and um, destroying the logic board. Now having said that though, there are some models of Macintosh that in fact require a PRAM battery to be installed in order to work. And the, re the reasons for that I'll get into um, in a little bit more detail later on. But basically I want to start this video by talking about the three main types of PRAM battery that Apple used on their Macintosh models from the original Macintosh from 1984 all the way through until the early to mid 2000s because there were basically only three main types and I want to talk about what they are and how you can go about getting replacements if you need to and then I want to explain why some Macintosh models actually need a battery installed in order to function most do not but some do and I'll go through that as well and finally I want to talk as well about laptop batteries because I've seen them corrode as well and also destroy the laptop in which they're placed. So that's something else you need to watch out for if you have an old Macintosh PowerBook. Now the first model of PRAM battery that Apple used on their Macintosh systems was known as the A21PX. Now unfortunately I don't actually have an example of this to show you so I'll have to put a photo up of it. 
um, mainly because all the ones that I had of all I saw so badly corroded I threw them away. In retrospect, I should have kept them, but uh, anyhow, I'll put a photo up so you can see what it looks like. But this battery, it's unusual in the fact that I've not seen it used in any other device. Um, as you can see, it's, a, it's about the size of a AA battery, but it's actually a 4.5 volt um, alkaline. And I think it's also known as the EverReady 523. And this battery was used in all the Macintosh models, starting with the original Macintosh from 1984, all the way through to the Macintosh, it would have been the Plus. So basically, any Macintosh from the 128K to the Plus inclusive used this type of battery. Now the good news is that the battery's placement on these models means that a corroded battery generally doesn't cause damage to the logic board. I say generally. But the bad news is these batteries, if you need to get hold of one, are rather hard to find. Um, for example, none of my local electronic stores um, carry them and so your only option would be to purchase them online from a retailer who does have them. But if I just turn this Macintosh 128K around, I can show you where the battery goes. Okay, so here's the back of the Macintosh 128K and if you look on the top right, you can see the battery compartment right here. So all you have to do is to pop off this little plastic door and that's where the battery goes. And note, like most of my old compact Macintosh models, this battery had corroded and has actually eaten away at the terminals. You can see all the green corrosion there. But the good news is that I've not seen one of these actually damage the logic board, even though the battery may have corroded uh, leaked and corroded the battery holder and upon the terminals, generally if you give them a good clean they'll be fine and generally this does not affect any other part of the system. So that's a good sign. But it turns out that these models of Macintosh don't need a PRAM battery in order to function. Obviously they won't remember their date and time or their PRAM settings when you turn them on, but they will still function normally without a battery. So as always my advice take the battery out and leave it out. Now the second type of battery that Apple used on their Macintosh models is probably the most common one that you'll encounter and it was used on almost all of their models from the late 1980s all the way through until the mid 2000s although there were some exceptions to that which I'll talk about later on but basically for most of the old Macintosh models that you'll find they will use this type of battery and it's known as, well I don't know what the code is, but it's basically a half AA size 3.6 volt lithium battery. And as you can see here, they come in many different, um, well, brands, but they're all essentially the same. Now, again, there's good news and bad news. The bad news is that these batteries definitely like to leak over time if left inside a system. The good news is that they're easy to get replacements for. My local electronics store carries these because I believe they are still used in a lot of modern equipment. Um, not necessarily as PRAM or CMOS batteries, but for other purposes as well. But the fact is they're easy to find and they're quite cheap. But as I mentioned, if you leave these in an old Macintosh system to the point where they, generally to the point where they discharge, they can start to leak and they can cause an awful lot of damage. But having said that, the solution is quite simple. Take the battery out and leave it out. Because I found that if you leave the batteries out, they will hold the charge, and more importantly, they generally tend not to leak. So I'd say it's something to do with the fact that if they're being discharged, they like to leak. But that's just, that's just my theory. Anyway, so let's have a look at these batteries in a bit more detail and an example of a system that uses them, this Macintosh LC3, and we'll see how it fits on the logic board. Okay, well here we have the Macintosh LC3 and these are all the different types of 3.6 volt lithium battery that I've come across. Now the first one is an EcoCell. This is in fact a new replacement that I recently purchased. So as you can see they're still being made and they're quite easy to get hold of. But across from there we have a very old one. This one is a Mac cell. Let me just turn it around. So you can see, there we go. So this one is a Maxell Super Lithium. Now this is the kind that was used, 
I've seen this on machines circa 1989 to 1993, and in fact, this one has a date code on it, if I can find it. Is there a date code on that? No, there isn't. No. Oh, uh, well, but um, this one I think came out of a Macintosh, um, I think it was an LC um, from 1990. If we move across from there, we have another common brand. This is the Tadiran, or Tadiran, or however you pronounce it. <laughs> um, lithium battery. And these were produced over a very long time span because I actually have two of them. Let me just move this one in here next to it. And you can see that these two are both Teddy Rand batteries, but one of them has a date code of, what is that? There we go. A date code of 1990, you can see there, fifth month of 1990. Whereas this one has a date code of, you can see there, I think that is, um, oh, I can't even read that. What is that? Um, 20, oops. <laughs> 2003. So they obviously made those for a very long period of time. And then over here we have, this one actually doesn't have a brand, it's simply branded as inorganic lithium battery. I don't know why they'd want to call, want to, want to make the point that it's inorganic, um, but <laughs> who knows. And that, so this one has a date code from 1993. Then we have a tech cell which, uh, let's see, it has a date code of, the date code's on the top actually, it's very hard to read, but I think it's from 2004, I think. And then over here we have a Saft brand, lithium, and that has a date code from 1996. So you can see that there's quite a few different types of battery you'll encounter, but they all have the same voltage and they all do the same job. Now, I know some people may say that one type of battery or one brand likes to leak more than another. In particular, I've heard that these red uh, Maxell batteries are very, very prone to leak. But in all honesty, I've seen all types of these batteries, all brands of these batteries leak at some point. If you leave them in a system for long enough, they will leak. There's no doubt about it. But as I've, as I've mentioned, I pulled all of these out. All of these still hold a charge and none of them have shown any signs of leakage. So I think that's the key. If you have an old battery like this that you want to preserve, leave it out of the system. Don't put any load on it and that will hopefully make it last a lot longer. Now there's also another brand of battery, a Varta brand battery, that I don't unfortunately have, mainly because on some machines, particularly the, the original Macintosh SE and Macintosh 2 models, these batteries were actually soldered to the logic board and generally they were Varta brand batteries. And as I said, I don't have one. I'll see if I can put a photo up of one. But they are essentially the same as these. But of course, if you have to take them off, you have to either clip the leads or desolder them from the logic board. So now let's look inside this Macintosh LC3 and, we'll show, and I'll show you where the battery actually fits. Okay, well here is the Macintosh LC3. In fact, if you remember this one from my um, capacitors uh, <laughs> episode where I recapped um, the logic board. But this is an example of a machine that uses the 3.6 volt half a lithium. So if we zoom in, you'll see the battery holder right there. So that's the little battery holder for, for these, uh, these batteries. Now, Obviously this one is in good condition, but I've seen some logic boards where the battery has just started to corrode or started to leak, and it may corrode the terminals on the battery holder. Not a big deal. However, I've seen some where the battery has been left in for such a long time that it has corroded the entire battery holder away, and it's actually fallen off the logic board because the battery acid will eat away at the pins securing the battery holder to the logic board and as a result it will often drop off. Now sometimes that's a good thing because it means then the battery is then moved away from the logic board where it can't do any more damage. But unfortunately it's mainly for systems where the logic board is mounted vertically. On this machine of course the logic board in normal use sits horizontally like this. And so if the battery starts to corrode, then the battery holder may corrode 
I can't even see it. It's buried behind the, <laughs> behind the SCSI cable. <laughs> the battery holder will corrode, but it won't fall off. It will simply stay in position, holding the battery and holding all the acid, so it will continue to damage the board. So again, just like every other Macintosh, the safest uh, course of action is to take the battery out and leave it out. Now, whilst the 3.6 volt half a lithium battery was the most common type used by Apple throughout the late 80s and 1990s, there were a few machines during that period that for some unknown reason used a totally different type of PRAM battery. And here's an example of one, this Power Macintosh 6200. Now, these machines used a 4.5 volt alkaline battery that was actually connected via wires to the logic board. In other words, there was no battery holder on the board. It was simply a, um, a square plastic box. Um, again, I don't have an example of this battery. I, I can't find <laughs> where it is, but I'll, hopefully I'll put a little clip in from my video on my 7200, which, in which I do show that battery. But that battery, it's basically a, a, a small square box, a plastic box with cables that run to a connector on the logic board. And the battery itself does actually sit on the logic board, however, there is a Velcro pad on the board um, that the battery hooks onto. So again, if this battery leaks, and I have seen them leak as well, then it's going to corrode the board beneath it, even though it's not sitting directly on top. So now these batteries are also quite easy to find, although being a 4.5 volt battery, what I've done in the past is to make a replacement, I've simply taken a, a 3 AA battery holder and wired up that because if you have three AA alkalines, of course, you end up with 4.5 volts. So that's sort of a cheaper option to replace the, the PRAM batteries on this particular models of Macintosh. Although, again, if you watched my video on the Power Macintosh 7200, or 7220, I should say, you'll see that I had replaced the PRAM battery but it then started to corrode and in fact destroyed the logic board, but I'll show you um, that a bit later on. <laughs> now, in terms of what models used this battery, it appears to be all of the Macintosh models that used a pull-out logic board with an edge connector on the front, and I'll show you in a bit more detail in a moment. But basically, it's all the models that shared this type of desktop case, in other words, the LC630, Power Macintosh 6000 series, like the 6200 and 6300 and the 6400 as well, and I think 6500, plus all of the all-in-one Power Macintosh models, the 5200, 5300 and 5400. They all used this other type of PRAM battery. I'm not entirely sure why though. I, I don't see why Apple couldn't have continued using the standard 3.6 volt half AA uh, lithium. And in fact, on later models, they went back to using that. So not entirely sure why that was done. Maybe because the, the, um, the um, CUDA chip, which controls the PRAM, maybe the CUDA chip on those boards needed a 4.5 volt input. Not entirely sure why. But anyhow, let's have a look at the logic board of this Power Mac 6200, and I'll show you how the battery connects in. Okay, well, here is the logic board out of the Macintosh, or the Power Macintosh 6200. And if we zoom in on the board, if you can see this little Velcro pad here, it's actually labeled battery, that's where the PRAM battery would normally sit. It actually sits right on top of that little Velcro pad. And if you look to the right, that connector there, which is, uh, was that J22, I think it is? A bit hard to see, but I think it's J22. That's actually the battery connector. So this battery is, well, easy enough to replace, but it can leak just like the, the other batteries that I've looked at. And as I mentioned, because this battery, even though it's sitting on top of the Velcro pad, I have seen these batteries, when they go bad, destroy the logic board. So be warned. Once again, take the battery out. Now, as I've mentioned previously, most Apple Macintosh models will start up and run perfectly well without a PRAM battery installed. 
Obviously, the date and time won't be retained and neither will the PRAM settings, but generally I consider that more than an acceptable trade-off because then you eliminate the risk of the, of the PRAM battery corroding or leaking and corroding the logic board. However, there are several Macintosh models that I found that won't start or run without a working PRAM battery. And I've got two examples of those here. I have a Macintosh 2 and a Macintosh LC475. Now these both need a PRAM battery to be installed, but for different reasons. In the case of the Macintosh 2, in fact all members of the, the original Macintosh 2 family that use this type of case, in other words, the 2, the 2X and the 2FX, all of them have a power supply that does not provide any standby voltage to the logic board when it's, um, when it's turned, when, when the power is, is applied. So because these models of Macintosh used a soft power system, Apple had to find a way of powering up part of the logic board, at least the logic circuitry responsible for turning the power supply on. And of course in modern systems there's a 5 volt trickle supply from the power supply that's fed to the logic board at all times. But on these early Macintosh 2s that was not done. So what they did is they used, actually used two 3.6 volt lithium batteries on the logic board one of which was for the PRAM, but the other one was tied in in series with the first battery and that was used to give a 5 volt signal to the power supply to start the system up when you press the power button or press the power key on the keyboard. So obviously you can't even turn a Macintosh 2, 2X or 2FX, you can't even turn them on without a, a working PRAM battery, or sorry, two working PRAM batteries. But because the Macintosh 2 uses um, two of these batteries, what I've done is simply taken a, two, a twin AA battery holder to make a three volt battery and wired in two of them. Because the other point to remember is that on the early Macintosh 2s, like the original Macintosh SEs, those PRAM batteries were actually soldered to the logic board rather than using a battery holder. So to change them, it made more sense to wire up a, a AA battery holder that took two batteries. Therefore, I have two 3-volt um, alkaline batteries that do the same job. And the system works just fine as a result. But crucially, what I do is that when I'm not using the system, I take the AA batteries out of the battery holder so that they don't corrode the system. Okay, now the Macintosh LC475, though, has a slightly different issue in that even though this, this um, LC does not have soft power, without a working PRAM battery, the system will not boot. In other words, if I try and turn on the LC475 without a PRAM battery installed, the power supply will come on, it will chime, but nothing else happens. The video does not initialize, it does not attempt to boot. And so I'm not entirely sure why that is, but it appears to be the, des the, the way it was designed for some reason. So certainly with an LC475, and I think there are some other models as well that have this issue, at least with a 475, you must have a working PRAM battery in the system for it to start up. And um, obviously that's one thing you should check if you have an old Macintosh that will chime but will not initialize the video and will not attempt to boot, it may be one that requires a PRAM battery to be installed. So I'm sure by now um, <laughs> the messages come through that leaving PRAM batteries inside an old Apple Macintosh is a very bad idea. And unfortunately, this um, is a real problem when you come, if you come across an old Apple Macintosh that someone else has had in storage for a very long time where they left the battery in it. And this has happened to me on many occasions. In fact, what I've got here is several of the machines that I've acquired which unfortunately were beyond repair because when I got them the previous um, owner had left the CMOS or PRAM battery in them which then caused um, corrosion of the logic board which I was not able to fix. So these are some of the casualties. 
um, this Macintosh 2, which actually has a 2FX logic board in it. <laughs> Bit of a shame that. Um, the Power Macintosh 7220, which I've already done a, a video on. This PowerBook 190CS, which was actually corroded by a bad main battery, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And on the end, this Power Macintosh 8100. All of these have bad logic boards because the previous owner did not take the PRAM batteries out before they were put into storage. Obviously, when I get hold of an old Macintosh that is in good working order, the first thing I do is take the battery out. No, no question. However, I will admit the damage to the 7220 was my own fault because I had taken the battery out but when I started uh, messing around with it, I put a replacement battery in and I left that one in there by mistake. So that one's down to me. But the end result is that none of these are working simply because the batteries were not removed. So let's have a look at each of these and I'll show you the damage that a leaking PRAM battery can do. Okay, well here is the Macintosh 2 that actually was upgraded at some point to a 2FX by swapping the logic board out. And you can see from the outside, looks fine, but uh, if I take the cover off, you will see the first signs of trouble. Now I should mention I've taken the floppy drive and other bits out of here um, because I've had to use it really as a parts system. But if you just have a look at the hard drive bracket, you see all that white corrosion there on the metal? That is a direct result of the PRAM batteries which sit underneath there on the logic board corro leaking and venting um, acid and corrosive gas up. You see, when a PRAM battery leaks, the electrolyte or acid leaks out, but the fumes that it gives off can also damage components that are not physically um, adjacent to the battery. So over time, because the machine was stored in this position, the the, um, the corrosive gas from the battery has actually drifted up and corroded that metal panel. And in fact, if I take, oh, there's a screw in there. Uh, <laughs> uh, be right back. Okay, so if I remove this, um, this panel, you'll be able to see quite clearly how much corrosion there really is. Let me just zoom out a bit. <laughs> you can see the damage that has been done to this, uh, this metal. And it's, no, it's even worse on the back side. If you look, you can see all the corrosion. And that is a direct result of a leaking PRAM battery. But if you think this is bad, wait till you see the logic board. Now, I don't know how close I can get here. I might have to move, change the camera angle. But on the 2FX, there are two batteries. One sits there, and the other one sits just over there. But... I don't know if you can make all that out, but we actually have, well, one of the chips, in fact, corroded off the board, the one that is supposed to be sitting there, the one that was right next to the battery. There's a capacitance missing as well. And unfortunately, all these other components have suffered damage as a result of the corrosive acid and gases that the batteries produced when they leaked. You can see, in fact, that little clock crystal there is severely corroded, and the circuit traces are are also very, very bad. So unfortunately, as a result, this board does not run. And it's a shame because it's a 2FX board, which, um, which is nice to have. Now, of course, I do have a 2FX that works, but I was hoping to keep this one as a spare, but <laughs> that's no longer an option. So it's a bit of a shame that, but that is an example of how a good 2FX was uh, ruined as a result of a bad battery. In fact, you can see as well on the side of the case, you can see the corrosion on the, on the metal panel there, again caused by the gases from the, the bad battery. So that's the, uh, that was the 2FX two, two that uh, <laughs> is now dead. So now we'll have a look at the 7220. Okay, well here's the Power Macintosh 7220. And if you look at my channel, I've already done a video on this. Of course, I've done a video of the machine, but I haven't done a video of it starting up. And that's because I can't start it up. And the reason for that, I'll show you once we 
once we get the get the cover off. Now it all looks fairly clean and tidy in here, but if I just turn this around, you can see the, what the problem is. Just like, in fact, the 6200 and 6300 series of, of Macintoshes, the 7220 also uses the 4.5 volt uh, uh, alkaline battery in the square box that actually hooks to the logic board via a connector. Now, I'll just take the VRAM module out. Okay. I had replaced the battery in this with, in fact, a my trick of using a 3 um, AA alkaline battery holder to make a 4.5 volt battery. Now, the original battery, in fact, is supposed to sit. Where is it supposed to sit? Somewhere. I think it's up in the up the end there. I think it sits up in the other corner of the logic board. But what I had done is I had put the replacement battery and I had stuck it on top of the graphics chip because I thought that was a good place for it. Unfortunately, focus. Is it going to focus? There we go. Unfortunately, you can see all of the green corrosion around the graphics chip because <laughs> I had left that replacement battery in the machine when I put it away. Duh. And so, as a result, um, those alkaline batteries started to leak and they corroded all the traces around the graphics chip. And so this machine will no longer... St well, it will power on, but it won't chime and it won't boot. Are you surprised? <laughs> so, until I can find another logic board for this, um, this machine is also dead. And um, I'm kicking myself because that was entirely my own fault. Um, hmm. So, <laughs> again, it just goes to show you, even if you replace the battery, if you leave it in there long enough, they will start to um, corrode and, and leak. And so that's exactly what happened here. So that's the 7220. Now we'll look at the Power Mac 8100. Okay, well here is the Power Macintosh 8100. And this machine looks pretty nice and, uh, nice and tidy on the outside, but on the inside, it's bad. And I mean very bad. This machine, being the tower Power Macintosh, has its logic board mounted vertically. Now, what normally, well, what in fact happened in this case is what, what I expected to happen. When I got this machine, the battery was left in it. And in fact, when I first acquired it, I could hear something rattling around inside. And it turned out to be the battery and the battery holder. Because as I mentioned before, what can happen when the PRAM batteries on these machines with the vertically mounted logic board, when those batteries start to leak and corrode, the battery holder actually corrodes away from the logic board and then the weight of the battery causes it to pull away and drop into the bottom of the case. Now, that would normally be fine, except this one had done enough damage before the battery fell off the board that the board is, is no longer usable. And because the battery was then sitting in the bottom of the case for who knows how long, it did a lot more damage. So let me open this up and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here is the 81, Power Macintosh 8100 with the cover off. And the first thing you'll notice is all of this rust on the bottom of the case. Now, this is what's left of the metal piece that normally runs the entire length of the case from front to back. And because the battery had been sitting on the bottom of the case for so long, it has eaten away, well, it's corroded, um, the the metal and, and a lot of it is missing and I'll show you that if I turn this around you'll see just how bad it is so if you look at the bottom of the case the metal is basically all missing because when I first acquired the machine all the metal had rusted and it all fell out <laughs> so there's supposed to be one solid panel of metal there but it's all gone except for the traces in the corner and you can see all the staining from the from the rust and I think that because the battery landed in that corner there 
because that's where the battery was on well, on the logic board the battery was in that position but up on the board so when it fell down it landed there and you can see that uh, <laughs> the fact that it corroded all this metal away means that that battery did some serious damage and if I turn it around and look at the other side you can get a better shot of the the damage down here uh, there it is so you can see that there's some metal remaining which is uh, which is all rusted but if you look at the board the board actually looks okay at least from here but appearances can be deceiving so let me pull the logic board out and we'll have a closer look at that okay so here is the logic board out of the power Macintosh 8100 and at first glance it all looks to be quite um, quite okay it doesn't appear to have any major damage but if we look at where the battery used to sit it used to sit down here so you can see the battery holder is no longer there and neither is the battery and that's because it had corroded to the point where it actually fell off the board and the problem is it remained in that position for enough time that it corroded the trace the the connectors on these memory slots in fact if you look at the the metal clips for the sim modules you can see how corroded they are and the pins in the connector are also badly corroded as well and uh, if we look there are some of the traces around it that have also been corroded as have the, the traces on some of the onboard memory chips and you can see the discoloration on the edge of the SCSI connector there the corrosion on the reset interrupt switches and some components around there and in fact there's a clock crystal that, that's actually missing over there because it also corroded and fell off the board so unfortunately this board is also no good and I haven't found another one yet so until I do this 8100 will no longer work this one in fact won't even turn on at all it will not even start the power supply up and even if I kick the power supply on manually it will not chime and it will not boot so this machine is also dead unfortunately so again, it just goes to show you that you need to take the batteries out of an old Apple Mac whenever you get hold of one before you put it into storage so finally I want to have a look at a Macintosh PowerBook that had that was also damaged but due to a bad main battery which I've also seen a lot of so let's look at the PowerBook now okay well here is the PowerBook 190 CS which again looks to be um, all all fine now unfortunately when I acquired this machine the original battery well this is not the exact one but this is the type that it would use this uh, this type of battery uh, it's gonna stand up come on stand up <laughs> this type of battery here which is a nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery a battery of that type was in the machine and unfortunately over time it had started to corrode around the terminals and when that happened again the acid and corrosive gas that the battery emitted then started to corrode away the battery contacts on the laptop itself and some of the circuitry inside now I don't have any of these batteries that are corroded to show you but I do have several of the older PowerBook 100 style batteries over here that are badly corroded so if you look at the contacts at focus oh, this bloody camera <laughs> there we go you can see the contacts on the top look at all the green corrosion all of these batteries have the same problem and obviously if you leave one of these in a PowerBook 100 series machine you'll have a similar problem you see it's not so much that the battery corrodes you can always get another battery but the fact that it will then corrode away the terminals the battery contacts inside the laptop that's a bigger problem plus if it's bad enough it can then corrode the circuitry inside and just to show you what's happened on this PowerBook 190 if I get this at the right angle I should be able to show you inside I might just have to give the, change the camera angle hang on 
Okay, I've just changed the camera angle slightly so we can look inside the battery compartment of the PowerBook 190. Now, first of all, you'll notice all of the green corrosion around the, the battery compartment itself. But more importantly, if you look up the end, I don't know how... F oh, oh, focus. Um, come on, focus. There we go. If you can see up the end, you can see that there are three battery contacts that are visible, but in fact there should be five. Two of the contacts have actually corroded away, and they were literally eaten away to nothing by the battery's um, leaking acid. So, thankfully though, this PowerBook will still run, but off AC power only. But I have seen some where the corrosion is that bad that the machine won't even start up. In fact, I have an, a standard 190 that has that issue where it's corroded, the logic board's corroded so badly that you can't even start the laptop up. And again, from the outside, with the battery in place, you would not know that this was happening. That's why with these laptops, just like with the desktop Macs, pull the battery out whenever you get hold of it. So I think you'll realize by now that whether it's a desktop or a laptop Macintosh, leaving batteries in the machines for any period of time is a bad idea. Um, and I have to admit, in all of the Macintosh um, desktops and laptops that I've seen that have had the batteries corrode the logic board, I've not been able to fix a single one. It's not just a question of one trace that has to be fixed up or one component that needs to be replaced. The damage is often so widespread that it just isn't possible to fix the logic boards. Replacement of the logic board is really your only option. So obviously, um, if you, um, like me, have a lot of Apple Macintosh models in storage and you haven't checked them out for some time, if you've left the batteries in them, get them out now. Because obviously you may already find that it's too late and that the logic board has been corroded. And as I said, don't forget about the laptops. Because even though they do have PRAM batteries in them, generally they're of a different type that doesn't normally leak. However, the main batteries, especially these NICADs, do leak. I should actually mention, though, that the later lithium-ion batteries that are used in the, um, in, I think, the PowerBook um, 3400s and up, I've not seen any of those leak, but I've seen the nickel metal hydrides leak, and I've seen a lot of these NICADs leak. So, as a result, it's important with any laptop Play it safe and leave the battery out. That's really the best course of action. So, I hope you enjoyed uh, part two of the video series on problems you encounter with old Apple Macintosh models. And in part three, we're going to be talking about hard disks. In particular, the reasons hard disks will not work. And more importantly, little tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years that may help you to fix a failing hard disk. Because as you probably know, all Macintosh models prior to around, I think it was probably around 1994, 95, they all used SCSI hard disks. And in fact, SCSI was, was used for several years beyond that alongside IDE. But you probably know that older SCSI disks, the ones that use the 50 pin connector, are getting very hard to find, especially in working order. So obviously, if, you, if you're able to fix a failing hard disk um, you'd be mad not to give it a go. So I'm going to be talking about that next week. So once again, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next instalment of Jason's Macintosh Museum. And today we're going to be looking at batteries? No. <laughs> uh, cut. We're going to be talking about another issue that is no. Um, no, 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 no. And batteries, batteries, batteries. I want to say about batteries. Batteries. <clears throat> um, I think the, um, the boot device, um, or the, the default SCSI ID that you're booting up from. Um, what else does it do? Uh, cut. Also, the, the PRAM. No, oh, far out. I highly recommend you take the battery out of the system because obviously 
So the first type of PRAM battery that Apple used on the Macintosh was used... No. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, the very first cut... <clears throat> so the very first type of PRAM battery Apple used on their Macintosh was known as the... PX21? Ugh. What's it called? Ugh. Now the first type of PRAM battery that was used on the Apple Macintosh was known as the AX28. You've got to write this stuff down. A21PX? A21PX. Ah, cut. Styles of battery. Well, in fact, they're not different styles. They're just different, um, different types of... Oh, focus. Focus. <laughs> no, you have to get closer. Duh. Now, whilst the three... <clears throat> Start again. And obviously, of course, you won't have the PRAM. You won't have the PRAM. Nope. But because the... the uh, so I'm, I'm sure... Cut. Okay, well, here is the Power Macintosh 8100. And once again, this, um, uh, cut. Uh, uh, get this bloody case off. Uh, come on. Ah. Oh, it's falling apart. 